Hello and welcome to the video. I'm over here. This gentleman to the side of me is a gentleman called Andy. Now, Andy and I have been working together for probably two or three months trying to tune this thing here. This is the Ranger T1 VTOL. Now, it has been available as a kit for a long time and as I'm releasing this, I think it's not a very well kept secret that's also going to be available with a flight controller in it as well. Now Andy is part of the RD pilot development team and lives here in the UK. So we've been talking about lots of ideas for videos, but Andy was interested in trying the VTOL stuff for himself. So, and you say a massive thank you to Ben up there at 3DXR. Ben sent him a Ranger and the VTOL kit and a flight controller too. And Andy has been playing around with VTOL. The aim of this activity is specifically to try and produce some kind of settings file and tune that if you were following along with that particular series, you could take put on your model and have it both hovering nicely, flying in forward flight okay, and the transitions weren't too horrific too. Now, after probably six weeks of playing around with all this stuff, sadly, rain has stopped play. A little bit of an accident means that the model that Andy has been flying looks a little bit like this. I think this is a photo in the back of Andy's car. And so at the moment, we've probably gone as far as we can with the tune that we've done. But the idea with this is that there is a settings file linked in the description below that has the tune as far as it had got. And it's about 80% there. Now, there are a number of caveats with this before we get into this and I kind of start talking to Andy. So let me very quickly cover these. Please remember that, that any tuning file or any tuning setups aren't really copyable from one model to another unless they are identically set up physically with identical electronic components or with identical settings. So it's not just a case of, well, you can take this whole file and put it on. It's Unfortunately, we kind of wanted it to be like that, but it isn't. So it's provided to help you get smoother flight, flight and transitions. Uh, this version below as well may be Ardu Pilot dependent. Ardu Pilot 4.4 is recording this is close, but not quite here yet. There's also a couple of things that Andy's found in the code that needed fixing. So a massive thank you to Andy for kind of highlighting those and raising the issues about those so that they can be resolved in future. Because even though Ardu Pilot is the go-to for lots of pilots for the VTOL builds, there are so many different ways to build a VTOL and he found a couple of things that needed a little bit of attention. Other comment about this is and caveat is that ESC telemetry is really needed for this to work. We'll talk about that in a moment. So Andy, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. What was the process that you went through to get to this, this latest version and what kind of exciting things did you discover along the way? <laughs> Yeah, uh, thanks, Lee. So uh, my experience is with multi-rotors. So, uh, and I've developed a lot of the code for multi-rotors in RG Pilots. And uh, so the way I approached this was the way I approached a multi-rotor. How do you make, make, uh, make a multi-rotor mm -hmm. fly well? And obviously part of the Ranger, uh, part of its flight profile is flying like a copter, effect <laughs> effectively. And I know that you, Lee, said uh, that... Uh, it, it was incredibly unstable when you were taking off as a as a copter and all sorts of shaking and that sort of thing. So my approach was I know how to fix this that from a multi rotor perspective. Uh, and typically, if you look, if you see a multi rotor that works like that, where it's shaking on takeoff, typically that's down to two things: uh, badly tuned pids and noise. Uh, and uh, so my approach was essentially to fix both of those things. And uh, the the first thing is to get rid of the noise. And as you can imagine, most of the noise comes from the motors, and in particular the RPM that the motors are spinning at. And so uh, RG Pilot has this capability where it can notch out, if you sort of look on a frequency profile of noise, it can notch out the, uh, the, the the noise at the particular motor frequency. And the way it does that is by taking the, the uh, most frequency, creating a notch, a, a notch filter that moves based on that frequency. That all works well. It's very kind of well-known principle in RG Pilot. But to get that to work, you have to have ESC telemetry. So this is why ESC telemetry is so 
um, important, particularly for quad planes, which are, if I'm honest, quite hard to set up. So there's a lot of things going on, not just kind of flying as a copter, but doing the transitions and noise can make a massive difference to whether you're su successful or, 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 or not. So to get uh, ESC telemetry, you need to flash a version uh, of um, the ESC firmware that supports that, and that's uh, BlueJay. This has gone through a number of iterations, but BlueJay is the one I used uh, in, in this configuration. And I used uh, the ESC configurator. I had to use an installed version because there is a web version of this tool, but I just couldn't get that to work with RGPilot, so I don't know why. <laughs> why, but the, the 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 installed version works, and we'll put a link for for, for that. And uh, I installed 1801, I think it was. So, and I think you'll you'll do a video about this. But you basically configure pass through in uh, RGPilot. You connect with the configurator, and then you flash the flash the new ESC firmware, which is based on BL Heli uh, S. Now, the only thing to say about this is that it does require RGPilot to understand the data coming back. And at least for the Matek F405 VTOL, there isn't a version of that uh, firmware out yet. So that uh, hopefully will be part of the, four point, uh, the RGPilot 4.4 uh, release. It is part of um, 4.3 for the Matek H743 wing, which is what I configured and tuned on. But if you want to use the Matek F405 VTOL, you're probably going to have to wait for 4.4 to come out with, with the additional uh, firmware support. And they're, they're all called BD Shot. The firmware's a, the, the name of the flight controller with BD Shot uh, uh, on the end. So uh, I did that setup. I um, Then I auto-tuned it. Uh, and I won't take you through the process. It was long and involved, and you don't need to know about it, other than I got some settings. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the auto-tune setup then gave me a set of PIDs for a multi-rotor that was much, much smoother. So I basically could then fly the Ranger pretty stably and ESC telemetry, notch filtering and uh, auto-tune gives you the, the starting point for the PID settings that, that we're providing. Just a couple of things about the hardware setup. What, one of the things you have to know about, and this sort of may affect people as they sort of try and plug it all in bd shot and d shot are an exclusive protocol so you can only there are certain constraints on the flight controller which mean you have to use a certain set of motor outputs for d shot or something else but not both at the same time so basically the first four outputs have to be bd shot so you'll see in in the settings i use the first three because there's three motors and then the fourth one is blank because i can't use that for a servo or whatever because otherwise d shot and pwm would get very very confused so don't don't make that mistake first four must be d shot and if it's not used for d shot don't use it for anything else and then the rest of the um the outputs are used for the servos i also configured the ranger for flapper on so this is where you can do roll by uh the the flaps going sort of uh, in alternate directions. And I think the default wiring is for them to move together. I think they're hardwired together, but you can actually separate the connectors. So you have two different channels for each flap and configure those as flaperons, which are are reflected in, in, uh, in the config settings. And that gives you a bit more roll control when you're flying as a as a fixed wing. So it's quite a nice uh, a nice thing to do that, that way. Unfortunately, because at the moment uh, Ardu Pilot 4.4 uh, isn't out, and the version of Ardu Pilot that is around that would work on the F405 VTOL board that lots of us have built the Ranger with, uh, doesn't mean that right now BD Shot is something that we can support. So it looks like. Uh, one of the lessons out of this exercise that Andy has gone through, and again, thank you to Andy for the time with this, is that if you're using the F405 VTOL, trying to use the notch filter, the dynamic notch filtering and the RPM bits and pieces back from the motors is not currently supported until 4.4. So, you know, we can you try and use the tune, but, you know, a uh, massive, massive caveat. So we're going to have to really wait for RD Pilot 4.4 to get the full benefit of that. Um, of course, the other thing is then flashing ESCs with firmware isn't particularly new to lots of multi-rotor pilots. However, if you are a fixed wing pilot and you're talking hearing about flashing firmware onto ESCs, that probably isn't something that you've done. However, with the pass-through uh, with 
I'll do pilots. It's very similar to doing it with Betaflight and other things. There's lots of videos about. If there's enough requests for it, I can make a video. Fortunately, our objective here, which was to go to this process and have a set of PIDs and go, here you go. If you have a Ranger and you've set it up with the official one, here's your PIDs and it's going to all work. We haven't really got there due to a couple of other things because you also found a number of issues in the RD pilot code itself and even even raised uh, one around the, the how the d term is tuned for things like your didn't you yeah so so this is this is an interesting thing about multi rotors versus quad planes very, very quickly your in multi rotors is controlled by the inertia of the motor bells so when motor bells speed up and slow down that creates a force that rotates you uh, because quad planes have these big wings and they're big that force is not very great and so what you need and and it's that force that stops you oscillating so it's kind of the the way that is controlled that stops you oscillating so with quad planes you have to use d term in your which actually for multi rotors is not strictly necessary so i had to make a change to auto tune that allowed you to tune auto tune d the d term in your and that changes only in 4.4. You shouldn't have to do that because the settings I provided should be fine. But I, <laughs> in order for me to get a good, good, good tune, I, I had to go through that that process. So, in in addition to um, unfortunately the F405 VTOL uh, Matex flight controller users like myself uh, being unable to kind of turn on all of this goodness right now, uh, it turns out that there are some little wrinkles in the code. So, all the people who've been flying it so far have been doing an amazing job getting it as well tuned as they have because there are extra things in the code that are currently being addressed and being fixed. So, the good news is, is if you are into VTOL, if you have a Ranger T1, although you know the purpose of this video was to give you a file and go chunk there you go it's all tickety boo that use that we haven't quite got there but we have got a set of settings a pid settings and configuration that you can use for reference down below that was created by this gentleman who happens to know what he's talking about it does also mean that when 4.4 does come out we are able to then take advantage of all this goodness that we can do things like the BD shot stuff and other things. And I probably will end up making probably another video, uh, maybe with Andy again, and we'll kind of cover the setup and what you need to do. So um, although the intention was for us to give us give you that file and just upload it and you're good, um, we're close. In terms of uploading the file, this is, I would probably recommend don't just open the full parameter list and then import the parameter file and do everything. Um, all of the settings in there that I have gone through in the setup are listed. So it's a full parameter file. Just go through and I would probably pick your PIDs and your other bits. What things would you take out of the parameter file if you were copying this onto uh, another configuration, Andy? Well, it's more what I would put in the parameter file. So really what you want to do is just put the PIDs in because... Uh, what will be different in particular is things like accelerometer configuration, which is is uh, per flight. Yeah, you, well, yeah, you would have to do your own. It's it's um, it's hardware specific, so every single ver every single version of the flight controller will be slightly different. So you'd want to still do your own accelerometer con uh, um, calibration. You want to do your own compass calibration, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So my recommendation would be to um, uh, set up the flight controller yourself and then apply a much li more limited set of changes, which I, I think I can probably provide. I, I, I'm, I'm sure I can provide a cut down version that would be um, easier so, there. Yeah. The other thing I would say is it's pretty easy for me to do a build of 4.3 that does have the required features and will work on the Matex F405 because I that's how I tested I did do some testing on the Matic F405. So if people are too eager to get <laughs> get hold of that, I'm certainly prepared, uh, quite happy to provide um, provide that, that, that firmware if that's something useful to people. So if you're interested in that and um, you want to take Andy up on that offer, obviously we need enough people to justify Andy's time. Pop it down below and we'll make that available. But hopefully in 4.4, most of that will be done. The last thing I'll talk about here is that Andy and I have been talking about a no number of things in RD Pilot. So do make sure you subscribe, have the bell notification icon turned on, and we'll try and keep you up to date with some of this stuff. Because 
one of the other videos that Andy and I have planned is that Andy was talking about how he, because of his expertise in setting up things like multi-rotors, he's helped set up five inch models that fly incredibly well. So well, in fact, that quad racing has been done with them. And I know for lots of pilots out there, myself included, historically, I would assume that anything I had kind of under other seven inches, you know, you're not going to want RD pilot on that. You're going to want beta flight or something else. So one of the things that we, you see Andy's shaking his head. One of the things <laughs> that we're uh, very tempted to do is to do a video and show you how to set up RD pilot on that. So again, if you're interested in that, let us know. And if there's enough interest, we'll do a video and show you how to set up RD pilot. I'm fascinated by that because there are lots of quads here that have external GPS and compasses for things like the GPS return to home. And if they have, they, if they support RD pilot i would love rd copter on there because then i can fly missions have a reliable return to home and all of that loveliness uh, but i've always found it's a very stable soft feel compared to beta flight but you know what we can fix that so again thank you to ben at 3dxr for helping us with this hardware thank you massive thank you andy for the rest of the development team for putting the time into this again there'll be two files down below now we've just decided on the call we will put the big one that have everything but there's also a mini one too which andy will edit up for me and that is just the stuff you can import again it's not going to get you perfect use it with caution but hopefully if you have a ranger t1 and you have it set up it's going to get you an awful lot closer to the perfect setup Last thing before we finish, I also need to point you to this gentleman's channel. Andy has his own YouTube channel. There is a link down below. Go and check it out. Go and make sure you are subscribing. If this is the kind of stuff that interests you, then it will be right up your street. So another person for you to watch on YouTube when you're drinking that cup of coffee in the morning. But Andy is a very, very knowledgeable guy who knows an awful lot about RD Pilot and is one of the developers. So whereas I am an enthusiastic amateur, he actually knows what he's talking about so thank you again for watching again all those bits and pieces pop them down below links to everything if you are going to fly your ranger t1 of these new settings again be careful but if it works let us know Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.